Hello, all of you beautiful people out there. It's me, Shira Psychic Medium, and we are live tonight and getting started with some free readings and some information for all of you guys. So please let me know that you can hear me, you can see me. Type in below and type in that you can hear me or see me. I'll check my phone, make sure that you guys are good. I just saw a hello come in from Kelly. Hey, Kelly, just wanna make sure that you guys can see me. Still waiting for it to load on my end over here. So let's just make sure you guys can see it. Hi, Dawn, hi, Kyla, I can see you as well. Thank you so much for coming in. Can you actually see? Yes, beautiful. You can hear me and see me. Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you, Gina. It's going to be a great night tonight. Hi, Rhonda. Thank you so much. For those of you that are new to joining in, I haven't done this in a while, and I'm so excited to bring this back. I kind of took a little bit of a hiatus, which was nice. Hi, Patty. Hey, Nicole. So it's going to be a great night filled with lots of light. You guys bring incredible energy. Jen, you say now you can. Beautiful. So what I need you guys to do to get this started, because you know how we do this live with Shira Psychic Medium, we start going and sharing. Share, share, share. Sharing means you're caring. So share this on your page for friends or family members who you think may want to get read. And once we get to enough shares, we're going to start our reading. So make sure you let me know once you have shared. You haven't seen me since Scope. I love it, Rhonda. Sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> but I'm glad you're able to join us tonight because I think it's going to be an incredible night. Hi, Eileen. I see you all. So um, I'm seeing a bunch of you guys coming in now. If you can just let me know that you have shared, I know that we're getting this started. You love the purple stone behind me. Yeah, that is the amethyst stone. I love that stone. For me, so strong. It actually originates from Brazil. And the energy there with the crystals, I find, tend to be very, very powerful. So if you guys love the energy of spirit and you love the energy of the crystals and the sacred geometry, you know, definitely get yourself an amethyst. It's definitely get yourself a good one, not like a cheap, crappy one. Get yourself a good one that feels good. It's all about feeling. Thank you, Alyssa, for sharing. I see that. Thank you so much. I'm seeing a bunch of you here. Sue just shared. Nicole just shared. Terry says she's going to share. Thank you so much, Amber. Hey, Mikey. How you doing? Hi, Alyssa. Thanks so much, Leslie, for sharing. Leslie just uh, joined me. We just had an incredible event with Bethany House. We'll go into the details of that. I don't know if you guys caught the update on my page, but lots of great things happening here in the spirit world and that in... Um, Long Island over here doing great things for people. Um, you went to see me at Jordan's Lobster. Thank you so much. And Shannon saying she shared it. And Nia says she's sharing it. Great. And I'm watching my screen. It's a little crazy here on my end because I'm watching lights going back and forth on my end. I don't know if you guys, your screens are blinking yet. But when Spirit tries to show me they're around, they start working with the electronics. And it could be a little chaotic. Oh, thank you so much, P and I. I really appreciate it. After a long day of readings, I'm like, I don't know how nice I'm looking right now, but I'm doing this for you guys. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Gina. I really appreciate it that you shared. Maria, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. So how this works is what we're going to do is we will start connecting in psychically and through spirit for various aspects through tonight and give you guys free readings. And I always say we because I'm never just talking about myself. Clearly, I'm tapping into the spirit world and there I've got a team and those are my partners and that's what works. So I like to help that with you guys. Hi, Christina. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm seeing a bunch of you. Good to see you again to Felicia. Hi. And Desiree, thank you so much for just sharing. Kathy, thank you so much also for sharing. So we're going to go into readings in a little bit, and I will get us there. So make sure you're sharing that you're with Shira Psychic Medium Live. That's what we're doing. We're getting it going so that we can get the energy pooling. We, once we have a lot of energy pooling, I'll start going into the readings. And what happens is spirit always cues me when to start. So that means the right people need to be in front of this screen at the right time to get the message, because it's never helpful if you're getting the message after the fact. Well, it is helpful, but it's not as helpful as if it was direct in the moment. So, oh, Carrie Ann, you had a reconnective healing and you feel great. Awesome. So glad to hear that. Thank you so much, Irene, for sharing. 
yeah, I don't think many of you guys know that about me. I do offer reconnective healings, and that's one of the services that I offer. Many of you know me as a psychic medium, but I also am a healer as well, and I work with energy. So for those of you that are looking to help restore balance in your life, uh, reconnective is a great option for you. Hi, Rachel. I'm seeing you as well. I love it, Rhonda. Sharing is caring. Hey, girly. Hi. So... I am getting to see that all of you are saying hi and hello, and I wanted to focus on you know your needs tonight and what is going on in your world. So for those of you that have friends or family members watching with you right now, you know, you might have your munchkin sitting there with you, or your sister, or your bestie, or your husband who's going, who is this? But definitely a hi to the whole family, because I know a bunch of you are watching at the same time. And oh, Kelly, you've got a reading with me in a few weeks. Fantastic. So you'll get a, a little bit of a hey, Kristen, of what it's all about. Now, Definitely, I'm with you with the prayers for the messages. Thank you so much, Mandy, for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Christina. So I see a bunch of you are here now, and I'd love to know where you guys are coming in from. So if you guys wouldn't mind sharing where you're from, right, what state you're from, what area from, let me know where you're from, and I'll see if I can tap in area-based as well. So we'll try something a little different. We'll tap in by areas as well. So if you can, write down where you're coming in from, okay? So you're from Long Island, you're from Merrick, you're coming in from Maine, Jamie, if you're coming in from New Hampshire or Florida, South Philly is here, awesome. Glendale, Queens, wow, coming all the way in from Nebraska, okay. And Smithtown, hi, Tanya. Oh, I've got an event coming up. I'm gonna tell you all about in Smithtown coming up at the end of next month. Brooklyn in the house, love it, Wyoming. Awesome. St. James area. So we have a lot of people from all over coming in, which is fantastic. Wisconsin. Hey, Angela. How you doing, sweetie? And coming in from Valley Stream and Massapequa Park. So lots of you here from all different parts of the woods. I love that because, you know, it's so great about Facebook. We can unite all different people from all different areas who have a common goal, which is to connect and to awaken to spirit. And that's something that is fantastic that we do when we're working with spirit energy. You know, Philadelphia I see over here. Beautiful Port Jeff, Irene. Oceanside from Joanne, North Carolina from Nicole, Selden, I'm seeing also, Wanta. So some goodies and some local ones. Um, now, who's coming in from the Germany area? Because I am picking up somebody that's coming in from Germany as well. So I'm wondering who you are. In addition to, I feel like I have some Aussies with me as well. Hi, Laura from Oceanside. Hey, Laura. And I hope you got my email, by the way. I haven't checked to see if you responded back yet, but I did send you an email. Um, I see you guys from Manchester, from Melville, South Carolina, Levittown, fantastic. So we have a lot of different areas and clearly, hey from Chicago, Dawn, Oklahoma, wow, Wading River all over the place. I'm wondering when we're gonna get our Californians in. Oh, there she is, Lenora, right, right on time. Okay, so I see our California girls as well coming in. I love it. So funny. I think California and in they pop. So I love it. Hello, hello. So I'm saying hi to all you guys. So sharing is caring. Make sure to share that you're watching with Shira Psychic Medium live tonight on Facebook. And we're going to get started very soon. So I want to tell you about a little bit of exciting news for me. And then we'll go into um, all for you. Okay. So just me, you have family in Germany. Awesome. Okay. So now what I wanted to go into, I don't know if you guys saw on my page update, but I just um, had the privilege to go to the Bethany House fashion show fundraiser. So I don't know if you guys know about Bethany House, but they are an incredible organization here in Long Island that helps homeless women and children really um helping them with their needs, helping them get back to a sustainable lifestyle and really committing to them and helping them get on their feet and not just giving to them in the moment, but really helping them develop and teach themselves so that they can have a successful life and that of their children if they have, which I think is so beautiful what they do. I was honored at the event. It was an amazing event. Over the years, myself and a team of psychics and mediums that I'm so grateful for have 
volunteered their time. Laura was there. It was incredible. They have volunteered their time and given of service to help women and children and their needs through Bethany House. And it was such an amazing event. I was honored by Sister Amy, who, you know, you hug this woman, you just want to start crying immediately. She just is such a gem. And I was honored as the um, outstanding 2018 Outstanding Woman of Compassion. So it was an incredible event. And then to surprise the psychic, that doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's usually a good one. I was also given a proclamation by Senator Kaminsky. So, you know, talk about really full circle. It's always such a beautiful thing to really to give of service to others, which is an example of what we're doing tonight. We are really going to be helping you guys with some free readings because I know not all of you can get in front of a medium when you need to. Yes, they can be displaced. Absolutely, Barbara, 100%. And, you know, it's for me, it's something wonderful to do to work with different organizations that really serve the greatest need. You're correct. Not all of them are homeless. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it feels like, you know, when we start working with different communities that are, you know, of honor and of the highest degree of light, meaning they're looking to help individuals because that's the sole focus. That's what it's originated with. You know, it always comes full circle. So I encourage all of you to give of your time, give of your energy to any type of cause that really calls to you. Because when you feel that calling, you will always reap the rewards at some point in your life. It doesn't have to be instantaneous. It's within the moment. It's just the doing that feels good by being able to help one another. So you guys should definitely reach out and definitely serve when you can. And it doesn't just have to be monetarily, it can be of your time, you know? So make sure you reach out to different organizations that are calling to you that you feel you can do, okay? I know, everybody's so excited, yay! We're gonna get started. I know, isn't that awesome, Kathy? I think it's incredible. And um, yeah, everybody's agreeing, yep. And Carol, you work with Bethany, beautiful. Thank you so much. It is amazing to give back, 100%. I think I just lost your link there, but there we go. Okay, beautiful. And, you know, they had, what was so amazing is they had um, Bethany Angels there, which I was so impressed by. You know, the Bethany Angels, they're younger women in the community. We're talking about teenagers who also give to Bethany House of their time and their energy. What incredible young women that we have got coming up you know, in the future. Oh, thank you so much, Christina. Definitely message me about that. We had also Leslie who was photog doing the photographs for the event. She is incredible. If you guys don't know about Leslie Renee photography, unbelievable photographer, and she gives of her time also completely gratis. So it was a wonderful event for all involved. Yep. Oh, beautiful, Melanie. You started a random act of kindness Facebook group. Fantastic. You know, it's all about spreading the good right? When you can focus on the positivity, you bring more of it to your life by helping others. And that is completely key. We're all about developing a culture of love, honesty, integrity, and bringing the world together through community, right? So I would definitely say reach out and help those around you that you feel called to. Hi, Diana. I also see Catherine. Hi. So just want to say hello to you guys. And we'll get started. Let me tell you about um, some of the things coming up. If you are interested in learning about events with me, knowing when I come back on Facebook Live, you know, when I have these type of events that you can come to and hope to get readings, oh, Leslie, um, and hope to get a reading, you know, definitely type in below the word angel, okay? So A-N-G. E L type in the word angel below. And you basically what happens is you subscribe to this feed. So you'll be alerted anytime I send out some type of messaging now you can unsubscribe anytime you want. All you have to do is type the word stop and then hit the, hit the word that pops up that says unsubscribe. So you don't have to worry about being bothered. You can just simply unsubscribe. You never have to worry. So you can subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe. It's not a problem. It's just so that you'll know what's going on. So type in the word angel and then you'll automatically be added to this. And you know, don't get upset at me if you get a post every once in a while because you can stop at any time. Just type stop. Very simple. And click unsubscribe. 
Oh, I just saw that there was a birthday that just came through a mom's birthday. So happy birthday. Beautiful. I see all you guys typing in the word angels. Beautiful. Oh, look, and it stopped on Leslie. How nice is that? She is a true earth angel herself and an unbelievable photographer. So if you guys need photos for any of your events, you definitely should reach out to Leslie, especially if you're in the Long Island, Westchester, New York, Staten Island area. She's phenomenal, really. So I know everybody's giving you a high five on that. Beautiful. So what I will tell you, just a quick little housekeeping thing. Upcoming events. Here's what's going on. Monday, October 29th. I am at Lucky Bar 13. For those of you that went to the last one, it was so much fun. Oh my goodness. So much fun. It really was. It was hysterical. The information that was coming through was heartfelt, was funny. It was all of the above. And it was in such a fun environment. So if you want like a low key, fun place to get red, an opportunity to get red, that's where you need to go. It's in Franklin Square in Long Island. It's Lucky Bar 13. It's on Monday, October 29th. Fantastic. Now, if that's not your cup of tea and you prefer, prefer more of a, um, a fine dining atmosphere, you want really like yummy Italian quality food, right? Delicious. Okay. New spot. I'm so excited. I was asked to come there. I am going to um, Il Vizio Rest Ristorante Italiano in Massapequa. So if you guys know it's on Broadway, it's in Massapequa, that's Tuesday, November 13th. The food is incredible, so you're not going to miss out, okay? And it's going to be an incredible evening of messages, so make sure if that's what you're looking for, if you like that family style, Italian flavoring, and you want to connect with spirit, this is your spot. Make sure to get there, okay? That's in Massapequa on Tuesday, November 13th. It'll be a great evening. It's okay. Got it. Kristen, you're saying it's in the old friendlies. Well, from what I know, understand now from what I've seen of it, it is beautiful. So, oh, Lucy, you're going to that one. Fantastic. Beautiful. It's going to be an incredible evening. Now, next, Rhonda says she keeps getting interrupted. Yeah, Penny, you see that, right? It's going to be an incredible evening. So, Elvisio, amazing. You know what I found so interesting is that a lot of legends stop by there to eat because the food is that phenomenal. So you'll see all different actors and, you know, different celebrities have gone in and eaten there, which I think is incredible. It's got that flair. So definitely check it out also. That and Lucky Bar 13. Now, what I haven't publicized yet, thank you so much, Laura. It is 555 Broadway in Massapequa. That's the Elvisio restaurant. But what I haven't publicized yet, it's coming out. You guys should actually see it tonight. I am so excited. This is my second time doing this, partnering up. We are doing a Marines Toys for Tot fundraiser. I am so excited for this. This is the second time we've done this. Last year, unbelievable event. It was so funny. Let me tell you, I was speaking to... Um, one of the Marines who was helping with this. And he was saying that this is one of the events that the Marines were so excited to sign up for that, you know, they have to decide if they're available or not. Well, guess what? All of these good looking Marines that were there last time are coming again. You know what I'm saying, ladies? Plus some others. So we're going to have a house full of some Marines there, you know, ready to meet and greet with you. In addition, some incredible messages. And that's going to be in Smithtown on November 28th at the Holistic Center for Soulful Living. And you'll see that post later tonight coming up with the information. So if you guys like to, or two, that's so funny, Katie, are they single? <laughs> I think some of them are. So. <laughs> Oh, you missed it last year, but you gifted your ticket, Joanne. That was really nice of you to do. So when I tell you, it's always an incredible event. So I'm so excited to do this again. Make sure you bring a toy with you. If you're coming, you have to bring a new unwrapped toy for a boy or girl with you. Hi, Corinne. So make sure you're there. If you guys want to know all of the events that are coming up, because I know I just kind of spewed them at you real fast. What you need to do is type in the word events below. Okay. So type in the word events, E-V-E-N-T-S below, and you will be able to get all the information 
about the upcoming three events, Monday, October 29th at Lucky Bar 13, Tuesday, November 13th at El Vizio, and Wednesday, November 28th, Toys for Tots event fundraiser. So thank you guys. I look forward to seeing you there. So, you know, what Spirit wants me to talk to you about, hey, Stacey. Oh, good. I see a bunch of you are typing in the word below, events. Fantastic. If you type in events, you will get the information. Now, when Spirit wanted me to talk to you guys tonight before we started our reading, so don't get anxious, guys. I can feel your energy. So I can feel the stress. If I keep breaking up, that's completely due to Spirit because the connection here is fabulous. So Spirit will play with the energy. That happens. It's part of life. Uh, I was doing a group reading the other night and literally the lights were going on and off, on and off, on and off. And then literally they shut them for a minute just to prove the point that they were in the house with them because they wanted to make it crystal clear that they were there from a physical standpoint. OK, so your loved ones can do incredible things. So let's go and talk about what spirit wanted you guys to know first and Really, tonight is about talking about love. It's about talking about the spirit world and the connection to spirit world, okay? And it's so important to know that when you are working with um, an individual that can connect, right, that you make sure that it feels good to you, right? The information should feel good. And you should be able to feel spirit around you. Now, some of you are not wired, so to speak, yet to completely feel energy. But for those of you that are, that are awakening slowly, what you'll notice is that you may get tingles around you. You might get heat around you. And you might get chills around you or like little tapping on the head when your loved ones are around you. That's really important for you to know so that you can identify that with your loved ones who are in fact around you. Because your spirit, your loved ones, basically, they want you to know they're there. That is so key, right? They want you to know just as much as you want them there. They want you to know and to recognize their energy. Now, recognizing their energy is, you know, not always the easiest thing. So don't be hard on yourself if it takes time. Dana, lots of chills, right? Exactly. It's important. You want to feel the energy of your loved ones. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a moment for a second and hi, Maria. What we're going to do is we are going to take a moment. And if you're sitting at home, you should close your eyes for just a moment, really briefly. Keep them closed. OK. And you're going to want to really feel into spirit. OK. So just sit there quietly and take a deep breath and let go of the stress and the burdens around you. And just allow yourself the opportunity to simply be. And as you allow yourself that opportunity, you're simply going to ask your loved ones in the spirit world to come closer to you. And as they come closer to you, you're going to allow yourself to be open to the feelings and the sensations that you may be receiving connected to them. So just sit for a moment, really quiet, and just allow yourself to feel your loved one's warmth, their chills, their tingles, their scratching your nose, their tapping your head. Just allow them to build that energy around you so that you know they're there. And if you're feeling this and you're feeling your loved ones, let us know. Type below that you can feel them around because it's so important for you to start recognizing your loved one's energy. And sometimes you just have to be still in order to recognize your loved ones because life goes so fast. So if you're able to feel the energy, Type below that you can feel their energy, okay? Give it a moment. 
and see if you can feel your loved ones coming through. Okay. Oh, what's going on here? Okay. You can feel them. You could feel it. Fantastic, Peggy. Beautiful. Jennifer, you felt cold chills all over. You can feel it. Beautiful. Shelly saying she can feel the energy. See, now, when you can feel the energy around you, when you have moments when, yeah, it tingles down your back, when you're not feeling your best and you're just wanting them and you got crying and goosebumps, I know, because you can feel their energy racing through you. And it is, hi, baby, <laughs> my daughter's watching. It's so important to recognize them because they're yearning for you to know they're there. It's not just about us wanting them there. They want you to know they're there. In your hair, Patty, you can feel her. Beautiful. And feel him. Beautiful. Alyssa, fantastic. Now, this is so important. You feel your heart is racing. You can feel it. Tingles down your back. Chills. These are all fantastic pieces of energy that you can take for yourself that you can recognize of your loved ones, right? So what you did in this moment where you're actually, even you can feel a presence behind you, fantastic. What you did is you allowed yourself to feel what your loved ones have been trying to get to you for you to notice for quite some time, all in that few moments of just being still. You see how simple it really is to feel your loved ones, right? Very, very easy if you give yourself the opportunity, okay? Yes, Mandy felt a heaviness. I understand that completely. Some people feel it as a tapping, okay? These are all ways to recognize your loved ones because when you need to know they're there, they will show you, but you have to be still. Okay. Now, some of you I see, you're saying maybe you didn't feel anything yet. That's perfectly normal too. It takes time to allow yourself the ability to feel. So don't beat yourself up. It takes time. You have to sit, you have to relax, and you have to be open to the spirit world. As Amy said it, yes, you have to be mindful, 100%. Very, very aware. Now, if you don't feel that they want to connect, like you're not feeling them, know that does not mean that they don't want to connect. It just means in this moment, you are not wired in a way that you're feeling them empathically, but you may get a sense of knowingness. You may get a breeze, as Deborah said. You may get a smell come over you that was not part of your household two seconds ago. Okay, there are all these different ways to feel your loved ones and to know their presence. So give yourself time and be patient, but they are trying to show that they're there. All right, that being said, now that we've kind of recognized what it is to feel spirits, okay, let's go on to the reading portion. All right, so let's get this started. Let's get ourselves psyched up, okay? Jazz your energy up, guys. Get yourself moving. Don't sit there dead in your seat like this because that kills the energy. You actually want to be excited to get connected to spirit, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to start first with a little bit of psychic. So if you have questions, please tap them in below. Okay, write them in, tap in your little keystrokes and type in the questions that you're looking for information on. And I will focus in on to where I feel called. If I do not go to you, that does not mean that I am ignoring you. It just means my attention got pulled to a stronger energy in the moment. That's all it is. Okay. And when they go into the information, you know, be open to it. You may not know the information yet. Okay. We are not going into spirit yet. We're going solely into spirit psychic information first. Okay. So let's go into what we've got here. Let me look at some of these questions and see them coming in. I do see a lot of, do you have messages, questions? I get that, but we're not doing that yet. So just bear with me here. Let's see. Kimberly, I just saw your question. Okay. Minor setback, but you will be okay. I am pulled to it like um right over here, but I also keep feeling like 
I don't know if you have a cold right now, but I keep feeling like a little bit upper respiratory over here for you. And I do feel like you'll be fine in a little bit of time. So don't worry about that. Okay, let's just see here the next questions. Um, for the person that asked if they're going to be moving, yes, 100%. I do see a move coming in, but it's not quite as soon as we're expecting. Okay, it takes a little bit longer than what you're anticipating. Okay. All right, let me look up here a second. Bear with me, guys. I can only see a few questions at a time coming through here. Hold on. Elizabeth, you asked about getting a house soon. The answer feels more of a yes to you, but I am pulled to a town with the letter M for you. So make sure to keep that on your radar. It's a town with the letter M. Okay. All right. You know, Fran, it looks like for some reason, I keep seeing you more in your house more than anything. So I don't know if this is something that you just have planned for yourself right now, but I am picking up you having more time at home and it feels like, um, you know, take your time with it. Laura, I keep getting a feeling like you're going to be super busy, by the way. So you were asking about, should you go back? The answer is yes, as long as you know that you have time for other things that are forthcoming in terms of family connection. Okay. Absolutely, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Um, let me just see here a second. Let me keep scrolling. All right. Normala, should you move back to New York? I'm getting a no right now, but I do feel eventually you will. I just, I'm feeling like it's going to be a bit of a delay, almost like a year before we're reconsidering this. So, you know, pace yourself on that. Okay. I am picking up on a girl. Somebody's asking about a, a boy or girl, and I'm as, I'm picking up girl energy right now. So I don't know what you're asking on who, but first thing that's coming to my mind is girl energy. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Let me just see here a second. Wait. 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 Okay, Desiree, I keep picking up with you with work, you being around a lot of individuals, but connected more to like PR marketing field keeps coming into my mind. So for some reason, I see you connected with that, that you're going to have quite of experience around individuals that are dealing with PR or marketing. And they want me to tell, um, where, where did she just go? I just saw her. There was an Alicia that um, I'm supposed to advise you to sit with meditation. If you could go to a meditation group, that would really help you with your anxiety from what they're telling me. So definitely do that. Alyssa, it looks like there is another child that you will have. They are showing me another child coming in for you. Okay. Fran, yes, you and your husband will find the right place for you guys, but I'm getting a two on it. Feels like two years before you actually know exactly what you want. Okay. Let's see here. Mary, for some reason, when you're asking about the type of job that you're going to be in, I'm pulled to more of like a customer service oriented line of work. So definitely dealing with um, customers, public, okay, as opposed to more business to business. Okay. Okay. Gia, I'm being told there's a father figure on the other side. So a gentleman that was a father that is sending that to you can be a grandfather, but feels more father-like. Okay, that's sending you those dimes, by the way. Okay. I know I see a lot of pregnancy questions coming in, and I have to tell you guys, so much of pregnancy-related questions are so much determined by the other side, whether or not a baby soul is ready to come in. That is a huge deal. Most people don't realize it. So much of it is determined by the baby soul. And you can actually call that baby soul in and make a valid effort at it, explaining to that soul, almost like pleading your case, so to speak, on why you want to be their mom or dad. So if you feel like this need to be pregnant and that you really want this, it's always a great idea to speak to your higher self and to the soul of the baby on the other side that is accessible to you to communicate your wants and needs and why you would like them to join you. Okay, so let's just see here.
Okay. Uh, Jocelyn, it looks like you need about six months on that financial question. So give yourself about six months, you know, don't spend a ton of money right now, but give yourself about six months to feel a little bit better with your finances. Uh, Jennifer, you were asking me questions about uh, money connected to college, and they just keep seeing the need for more work that comes in. I don't know if you're just not working right now or if you're not working in a field where it's like not enough, but they're showing me more work. And yes, there's funding that comes in government wide that shows that it's coming in connected to that in the form of loans. It doesn't look like scholarship. It looks more loan to me. All right, let's see here a second. Rhonda, I'm actually picking up something about your daughter re-reflecting on her wants and needs. So there might be a pause there, just as a heads up, okay, before there's a signature. Let's see here a second. Lana, I heard the word dad. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Mona, any luck for buying a house? I heard yes, but you're basically about a year and a half out before you're in that uh, realm. So right now it's in like the want stage, right? And the planning it in our mind, but the not actual actualization of it yet. Okay. The promotion that somebody just asked me about connected to a spouse, that's next fall is where I was just pulled to. Yeah, but I understand what you're saying. Somebody just wrote something about her being at office. There's something about reconsideration before signature. Just remember they have me saying that, okay, as I tapped into your energy. Okay, let's just see here a second. Two thousand and twenty one for the woman that just asked me on when I see them buying a house. I was pulled into two thousand and twenty one for you. Lisa, that looks a little slower on that end in terms of what you were asking me about houses, about a sale. It looks a little slow right now. <laughs> it's so funny. I never actually predicted on sports before well, once. And I got it right. But um <laughs> I saw the colors of the sports team that was gonna win. Go figure. But who knew? I'm not into sports, so I never even predict on it. All right. Let's see here a second. For the woman that asked me about financial freedom, I just felt hands tight and I saw an application for another program that looked like it was going to um, yield some type of um, subsidy or some additional type of income coming in. Okay, but initially I was feeling the hands tied feeling. Okay. I see you guys. Let's just see here. Okay, hold on a second. Sorry, guys. I'm only picking up a few questions at a, at a time. So let me just see here. Yeah, Rhonda, I just saw half of your question, but I didn't catch the whole thing. There's something about a change there. Watch with the signature. It's coming in again. So, Joanne, yes, your son will get that. Hi, Melissa. I saw the purple heart. Hey, girly. Okay. And let's just see here. Yes, Jennifer, when I'm looking at your health, the first thing that I got pulled into was, yes, there is improvement. But the first thing that got pulled into me was um, actually was nutrition, that as you ch you're changing your diet, you're going to notice a different um, positive impact in your health. So that's really important as well. Okay. I don't see any decisions being made on that family business anytime soon. Somebody just asked about a family business. Okay. You're welcome, Joanne. Yes, I see noodles. <laughs> I just saw that, Eva. Um, as soon as I heard it, I just heard noodles. So definitely, we know the doggies around us. Okay, let's see here. Oh, what happened to those questions? Hold on, guys. I have a little bit of freeze up on my end. Okay, there we go. They're back. 
Mar uh, Marcella, it depends on what the angel numbers are that you're seeing. Different numbers have different meanings and they will have different meanings to you. Okay. So like when you're seeing five, 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 that is generally, you know, big change when you're seeing five, five, five quite a bit. Okay. Pay attention to change that's forthcoming for you. It will be dramatic generally when you're seeing it. So you almost feel a little bit shaken up, but the result of it is very favorable, even if in the moment you're not unsure. Okay. If you're seeing the fours, those are always my numbers for spirit with the angels. Okay. And that's always a great number to see. 888, generally a number of prosperity. So when you're seeing that, know that there is forthcoming abundance. The Basically, the frequency of that is around you. So it's yours to kind of tap into and pull yourself into alignment with. Okay. Um, let me just see here some of my favorites that stand out. You know, when I see the one, one, ones, four ones, basically, one, 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 one. That is always for me an awakening code. That is the way spirit is waking you up to having awareness of them being around you. So Dan, I hope that helps you. That's the one, 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 the four ones. That's an awakening code. You may notice that you start to feel more empathic or aware of like events that are forthcoming. You might get psychic dreams. You might have more deja vu. Those are all things that come together when you start seeing the one, one, ones, it's not always instantaneous guys. It does take months to come in, but it is an indicator. Okay. That you are having changes with your body and with your energy center. Okay. Also, some of you will see numbers repeating that are associated with your loved one's birth dates or the times that they transition to the other side. So if you guys are experiencing that, definitely let me know as well, because many of you do experience that. You'll see repeating numbers associated with your loved one's birthday, your birthday, or the time that they passed, the time they transitioned. So pay attention to that. Um, when you see 9-11, it's generally to keep your thoughts positive, right? And you're manifesting things quickly. So keep things positive. It's not necessarily an emergency, okay? So don't get yourself all crazy when you're seeing that. Uh, let's just see here. Matt, immediately I just got, yes, there is a career change soon for you, okay? Patty, you got it. Find out if she wants to, because it, I'm not getting the impression that there's a want yet or a need to fully. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, and I just heard don't worry, because they gave me my symbols for the don't worry. Okay. Which I love when they start singing to me in Lion King. Absolutely. You're very welcome, Marcella. Okay. So does that help you guys with some of the numbers? Okay. Hi, Maureen. I just see you now. Hi, Kimberly. You, what do you, so you see them? Exactly. Exactly. Now, let me just see here. What I like to do is when we start going into spirit, just as a heads up, all right, what, how I work it is I will close my eyes and start tapping in or feeling into the spirit around me. When you know this is your loved one or somebody connected to you, that's when you start typing, it's for me. I understand this. It's for me. And everyone that's watching will say, okay, Shira, she thinks it's for her. She thinks it's for her because I see so many comments coming in that I may not be able to zone in and respond back to you immediately because I'm focusing on spirit as I'm doing it. So I can only multitask so much. I try very hard, but I mean, it's not exactly an easy feat. All right. Oh, Valerie, thank you. You hope you I have another class soon. I know it's something that it's on the back burner for me. And I get asked probably almost every week to teach, which for me is actually a, a tremendous compliment. I know that many of my students are out there working and are successful and they're doing a great job serving the community. I'm really helping other individuals and I'm so proud to know that I have been their teacher and have helped them start because many of them were not able to hear spirit, feel spirit, no feel, no spirit, touch fear, spirit, any of the above. They had none of that before they started. And after they did their course with me, one course, two course, right? Christy Akuna Matata, love it. Then their abilities kicked up. So never forget where you get your first start from, okay? Because as a teacher, we get brought into your lives to really awaken you. So you never forget where you started from. You never forget who actually helped you open that door. 
because as a result of it, they brought you to that next level. And spirit gives me that ability to help others get to that next level. So when I do start teaching again, I will let you guys know, you know, you guys will be first to know as always. So, okay. Thank you so much, Jillian. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> yeah. I love, um, I love teaching. It's something that's a passion of mine. And, you know, I just have to have a lot of time to do it. And it's a big commitment because I commit to my students. So for me, it's really important to be able to give that amount of time that they need. Oh, thank you so much, Patty. My pleasure. You're one of my favorites. Mwah. So, all right. So what we're going to do right now is let's all sit for a moment quiet. Okay. Thanks, Nicole. And we are going to sit for a moment and I'm gonna start feeling into spirit's energy. And what I need you guys to do also is be actively energetically available as well, meaning you're ready to start connecting with loved ones. So like we practiced before, we're feeling into the energy, right? So you know your loved ones are around you. So let me just start feeling into spirit and then we'll begin. Okay, let me just see here. I'm seeing a question that just said, thank you. Hold on one second. And we're gonna go into that. Okay, good. All right, let's see here. So we're going to sit quiet for a minute and just pull into the energy around you. So bring your awareness to your center and start feeling for your loved ones. And pay attention to the feelings that you get as I start to build the energy around us. Okay, so I want to start actually with a gentleman first. I do hear the name John very significantly. Okay, he's giving me the impression that he was a carpenter or he was excellent with carpentry. He gives me the impression that he actually built some of his own furniture. He brings me to the concept of a bedroom set and building a bedroom. Now, I don't know that John is his name, but I know that John is significant. I know that he is an older gentleman. He should have passed in his later 50s, okay, or 50s. And I know that as I go into him, he makes a point of the fact that he built his own furniture. Now, simultaneously, there's a very distinct pull to the Chicago area that can also be connected, okay? And make sure you claim this when you know it's him, so I'll keep going. He also brings me the connection to the name Mary, and he gives me the impression that she is with him, okay? So it's very important to acknowledge that we have the reference to John, who was very strong with carpentry, so much so that he would have built some of his own furniture, okay? He takes me to a bedroom and gives me the concept of building one's own furniture, now, it feels like, you know, when somebody chisels out details and they make the furniture, okay, it looks like he chiseled out details into the bed leggings and into the headboard. And it's very important to know, um, it's very important to know that he is also with Mary. That's very, very important. Now, the names can be first or middle name, okay, on this case, but it's very important to acknowledge. Hey, Becca, hey, Michelle. Now, it also feels like there would have been an issue connected to a heart attack that's coming in, okay? There is a Chicago reference. That doesn't mean he lived there, so I wanna be clear about that. It's just a Chicago reference. Now, Jennifer, you're saying you understand why he would be giving you details of his bed. Okay, so do you understand who both the John is and then Mary as well? Okay, let me get a little bit more details so we know. Okay, and it feels like he talks about 
his house, okay, or where his loved one lives, let me be clearer, where his loved one lives, that at one point was either saturated with water or flooded with water. He makes a point of that, okay? And he's giving me the feeling that the bedroom or the house where the bedroom would have existed, there would have been water damage, okay? That feels important as well. A few of you are claiming this. I see that what's popping up very um, quickly. So if you think this is for you, let me know. Say, I think this is for me and this is why, meaning these pieces fit. Okay, Jennifer, you understand this. Okay, now Jennifer, would you also understand the reference to the Chicago or Chicago area? Like I just heard the Chicago Cubs in my head as well. Elizabeth, you're saying your grandmother was Maria but would you also have the John reference as well and the making of the furniture feels important and the house being affected by water with flood damage or some type of water damage. So all of those have to come in. Yes, Jennifer, you had to clean the damage in the room with the water. Okay, thank you. Now, okay, now Green Bay. Okay, thank you, Jen. And it feels like there should have been There also should have been filling of the lungs as well because they're showing me the filling of the lungs coming in. Okay, that's very, very important in terms of what this individual experienced prior to transition. Okay, and it feels like this gentleman wants to refer to his daughter. So would we understand all of that, that he wants to connect or refer to his daughter as well? Are we able to get that, Jen? Just waiting for your response before I go back for more. Okay, so you would understand, I get that you understand he's a smoker, you understand the chest, but there also would have been filling of the lungs as well. Okay, connected to the transition point. Okay, Jennifer, you're saying big time, you understand this big time. Okay, fantastic. And Jen, you're his daughter. Thank you. Okay, so we're definitely them with you. All right, thank you so much. So I do know that this, Gentlemen wants to acknowledge you and surround you with love, which feels really important. First and foremost, he talks about the chaos that's been going on in the household scenario for the past two weeks as well. Joanne say, yay. Okay. But we would understand a little bit of the chaos or disorder that's been going on in the house connected to the past two. Would you understand that, Jen? Just waiting for your response. You're very welcome, Jen. I see your thank you. Would you understand that piece? I'll get a little bit more. Now, he talks about the chaos in the house. You'd understand it. Thank you. There's our yes. Beautiful. Thanks, Jen. And would you understand also the tapping? I'm hearing this sound, that knocking sound on the window or doorway. It looks, sounds like a door sill to me, but also I'm getting the glassy sound of window. And it's a tapping sound. So it's his way of trying to show you that he's around you. You would understand that as well, correct? Would you understand the tapping or the noise that's going on with spirit connected to you? He's telling me he's just done it too. Make sure you can understand that, Jen, because it feels pertinent. Now, at the same time, he talks about the daughter Okay, beautiful, Jen, thank you, beautiful. Now, he talks about the daughter who's having difficulties with schooling or connecting with school and education. Would you understand that as well? Yesterday he tapped for you, thank you, Jen. Now, would you also understand him referring to the daughter, okay, who is having difficulties with the desire or the ability to go back to school, okay? Bird flew into window, ouch, sorry. Okay, that's your tapping, thank you. Okay, and yes, you'd understand about the daughter, correct, with having the difficulties with the education. Okay, now he's telling me to talk about the pause in the education, and that is okay, your baby girl. The pause is okay, and to give it about, give it about six months, okay, and she will feel like a new person again. 
Okay, so he gives me that six on it, telling me she's going to be much better. You'll notice a big difference in her, but he gives it connected to the six, which feels significant. Okay, he also talks about a birthday celebration in the month of June as well. So he's bringing me there as well. So would you understand that the birthday celebration connected to June? Thank you, Jen. I'm sorry to hear that it's due to medical issues, but he does give me six months positive okay it gives me a positive feeling and he talks about that june birthday connection as well would you understand that just let me know if you get that perfect okay great and it feels like yes and you understand that beautiful okay and it feels like also he just wanted his daughter to know that he's sorry because he's giving me the impression that there has been a delay or some distance in terms of the communication in wanting and needing from hearing from him sooner. Would you understand that as well? Meaning he's wanted to communicate with you more actively, but hasn't been able to fully step forward for you the way he would like to at earlier times when you really felt you needed him. Would you understand that as well, Jen? Oh, thank you so much, Alicia. Jen, would you understand that? Just waiting for you, so I know whether to go in more. Now, let me just get a little bit more while I'm waiting for your response. He talks about... Yes. Okay. There's your yes. Thank you, Jen. Okay. Now he talks about the desire and the need to connect with him more steadily and that you need to kind of sit more in your own quiet space, in your meditation space. Thank you so much in order to connect and feel him more because from a transitional standpoint, he is not as close energetically as he was. So it's easier if you can bring yourself into a full centered position where you're able to focus on connecting to his energy because there's more distance between the two of you now, energetically speaking. So once you can attune yourself to that energy stream, it's going to be so much easier to access your dad for help when you need him during even your readings and when you're looking for your connections. Would you understand him? Yes, and you are mad at him. I get that 100%. Because when we want them close and we want to hear from them, we're like, where is this? Jen, you totally get this. Thank you. Okay, so this is really, really important for you to understand that he is with you and he is helping your daughter. And And it would be a not such a bad idea, according to him, to bring the daughter also to a naturopath as well, because he's making me feel like there is not necessarily the clearest plan of action connected to whoever she is treating her right now. So he is making me feel like he's trying to help you help her by opening up another spectrum of medical help. That's also a medicinal practitioner, like really is an MD, but also is a naturopath as well that will explore other areas. So consider that, okay? Beautiful, you are, beautiful. And he does say he is sorry. Again, he does represent with that. And he tells me to tell you that the fatigue will go away, okay? So lately you've been experiencing more fatigue than what you're normally used to. And he's telling me that that it will go away for you, all right? And you would understand what he's referring to, correct? Okay, beautiful. Jen, you're looking into that now with the naturopath. Fantastic. Because he is kind of bringing that to you, saying, yes, we need the real medical, but we also need another side approach to it. Okay, beautiful. You got the yes. Okay, great. And... He says he's going to access you through the dreams tonight, but he's going to wake you up around 4 tonight, 421 actually. 421, 421 is what he's going to wake you up tonight about. And he also will show you 421 repeatedly so you know he's around you even more so. So pay attention to 421, all right? That's very, very important. 
Now he just told me he's going to step back now. So I hope that was helpful for you. I'm going to go into the next energy if you guys don't mind. Okay. Thank you, Jen, for being such a great sitter and responding back to me. That's how we do it. That's how we keep the energy alive, guys. So make sure when your loved one comes through, you're able to actively respond to me. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you to your dad. All right. Let me see what we've got here next. I'm just going to close my eyes for a moment. All right, I want to start with a female energy next who she actually just made my lips numb. So I know that she would have had numbing going on in her face. I know that I do feel I do feel that she is connected to a drug overdose as well. I feel like as I go into her energy, I get the impression of sadness or depression associated with her prior to her transition, but going on for a period of time that family and friends would have recognized and tried to help her, but not in like the conventional means. They didn't understand the significance of how or what she was going through at the time. She is giving me the numbing associated with what someone feels when they are under, um, when they're overly medicated or they're under the um, influence of drugs and they start to get numbing in the facial features, she is giving that to me. And she's making me feel like she had thought about her exit, meaning her life ending at another time, but didn't actually go to that steps at that point. So she does take me there. Now let me get a little bit more from her. I know that she comes in as an older woman all right. This is not a younger woman. This is an older woman that's coming in that would have had a tendency to either over medicate or get her pills confused, which would have caused over medication. I see multiple pill bottles lined up like prescription pill bottles. And this is a female guys. And it feels like with her, she would have had what looks like graying hair as well. And it feels like almost like an overdose or drug interaction that would have connected, that would have caused this basically. But I do feel like her heart stops. That's the final way that she transitions would be through her heart. But it does feel like there was a problem with her with due to drugs or medication. Would we understand who this woman is? Gray hair. Let me get a little bit more. And she has family that lives in Florida as well. That's very important also. If you think it's you, please tell me what you think is you of those pieces. Because we have to kind of have all of those pieces together. It can't just be spotty. Okay? Okay? Now let me get a little bit more. She was a type of woman that when we walked into her single family home, because she's showing me it was a single family style home, she typically had the, the drapery drawn, meaning she always had like the, it was darker basically in the house. She gives me the feeling also, she hasn't given it to me yet. If she does, I promise I will give it. And she gives me, let me just see that again. I see these tight style couches. So when I'm looking at her couch right now, it looks like it's in a navy or dark green coloring in my mind. It's a tighter weave fabric. It's not a leather. That feels like that was right by those long drapes, okay? In that living room or sitting room area, there should be what looks like or reminds me almost like precious moments or little tchotchke stat, uh, statues that would have existed in the bureau or tall standing unit that had glass front and wood that was right there. The numbness is important, okay? But it feels like it's due to medication or an interaction 
of something that she was taking due to her condition. Would anybody understand this? I see a few of you are writing yes, but I'm not catching the full piece. Okay, Susan, you're saying her daughter lives in Florida. You're saying yes. I see Katie says yes. So I just want to make sure who we're definitely with. Bear with me. And I just feel like I'm medicated and it feels like due to depression, doing, due to the fact that I wasn't feeling well, I was suffering with bouts of depression throughout this. And I had thought about taking my own life, but didn't actually do that. Would we understand that? Now, it feels like with her as well, she wants to recognize two boys in the living. Okay, so there would be two boys directly connected in the living and a daughter. Would we understand that? Susan's saying yes. Lisa's saying yes. So we have a few of you still. Okay, let's narrow this down. And it feels like also she lost her ability to communicate. That's also very important. She did lose her ability to communicate. She shows me an expanding of the tongue, which is showing me swollen in this area and the loss of the ability to speak, all right? And it feels like when I look at her hair, she has a bit of like curls to the gray hair. So a little bit curling and it's shorter her hair. And for whatever it's worth, I feel like she went through heavy sweats because I'm seeing the wetness in the back of her hair. And I feel like that was something that she herself couldn't control. Susan saying, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So we may be with you, Susan, but keep listening. Okay. And it feels like, let me just get a little drinky here because she's killing on my tongue area right now. It feels like There should be a friend of hers by the name of Betty. That also feels very important. That could be first and middle name, but she should have had a friend named Betty. Betty could also be B or Beatrice, but should be the friend Betty or Beatrice. Christina, that knocked you out. Okay, this is good. We want to knock out in order so that we can narrow it down. Okay, and it feels like husband had already passed at the time. So when we go there, we know that the husband had actually already passed before her. All right. I saw a few of you, Kristen, sounds like grandma was passing. I want to get a little bit more. And she wasn't much of a cross crocheter. Okay. Susan's saying no on that piece. Okay. She wasn't much of a crocheter, but she was better with the coins. Mm-hmm. I miss you too, Carrie. And it feels like, okay. Kristen's saying she loved Betty Boop. Now, Kristen, would you know her to have the connection to the family in Florida? And then the recognition of the two boys. Would you understand that? And also have the husband that's on the other side. Because I'm hearing yeses in my head, but I want to make sure I'm with you. Would we understand that, Kristen? She has two sons and her husband's past. Perfect. Okay. Now, would you also understand the Florida connection? You're not so sure on the Florida. We'll find it. And it feels like also uh, she would have had the numbingness and the over-medication. And it feels like I lose feeling and I'm unable to communicate as well. Would we understand that? And she's talking about, unrelated to her, but connected to family. She's talking about like a, um, a vacation. First I heard Mexican, but then I got pulled more to a Caribbean style vacation. So hi, Susan. <laughs> I missed you too. And okay, and towards the end, she couldn't communicate. Okay, thank you, Kristen. And would you also understand... Let me just see here a second. When she was here physically and she was in her best, okay, 
that it feels like she would have actually, or the husband would have actually had the Buick, because I'm being shown a Buick right now as well. Would we understand that? And your mom is the vacation queen. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And there should be also be a cruise involved with that vacation, by the way. It shouldn't just also be um, flight travel. It should also be travel by boat. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. I really appreciate that. So would you understand that, Kristen? Hi, Jen. You're on? Okay, hey, Jen. Okay, Jen, would you understand this? Kristen, you went on the cruise this summer. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. So this is just her way of recognizing that she is with you. She's also making me feel like I have to talk about an honor connected to education as well. So would you understand some type of honor or certificate? Because she's showing that in my mind as well. You went to Bermuda. Beautiful. But would you understand the honor connected to education that she's showing me right now? And she's giving me the impression, like, sometimes you feel like as an educator, you get spent or you're exhausted due to the fact that you're working really hard and you're putting in your all for all these kids and, you know, you get exhausted. You got your master's in May. Thank you. Okay, there's the certificate. She's making me feel like she wants you to know that it's okay to feel tired connected to the schooling, to like working with the kids, and that she knows you're giving it your all. And that it's okay if you feel like you're a little tired or maybe even a little bit almost like a little done in some way, even though it's the beginning of the year, that will pass. Okay, you said yes, you got it. Okay, perfect. So you understand where she's going with this. She says this kind of like, almost like sometimes when you feel a little bit defeated in the moment, that type of attitude is temporary. This will pass. Okay, because I hear this too shall pass, just like that. So just know that that's going to be coming to an end in a positive way, and you'll feel reinvigorated and back to, you know, your incredible self connecting with your kids again. Who Apparently they're giving you a run for your money this year. You got some tough ones, I'm being told. So more than you normally are used to. So would you understand that? And you don't have to totally comment if you don't want to on that piece, but you understand where she's going. Okay. She is sending me love for you as well. Thank you so much, Don Marie. She is sending you love. It's so important that you know that. And she's making me feel like I have to talk about the decision on the car because she's taking me to the decision on the car, yes, you have a lot of ninth graders. Okay, let me just show that. You have a lot of ninth, rambunctious ninth graders. Okay, thank you. And she's saying the decision on the car, I hear slow down. Slow down on the decision about the car. Okay, it's not the time yet to make the decision. And that piece feels more connected to mom, okay, than that of you, Kristen. So slow down on the car decision, okay? And also, she wants me to recognize that she's talking about, now this is not family related, but I feel like, Jen, you're going to understand this. She's talking about an individual that you would have just recently had dealings with where their cataracts is coming back, okay? Kristen, yep, mom just got a new car. Mom? Slow down on the new car. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jen. Okay. But she's talking about you having dealings with an individual where the cataracts just came back. Would you understand that? And that that person is hard to handle, but it's manageable. Like, because the way you are, it's manageable to handle that person. Would you understand that, Jen? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Would you understand that, Jen? It's a female that had the cataracts that it's like it's either resurfacing or there's a problem resurfacing. Person is a little hard to handle, a little hard to manage because there's frustration connected to that. Thank you, Terry. That's, I try to be specific. <laughs> uh, oh, you deal with that every day, Jen. 
Okay, so let's go into who mom's referring to. So this may make your life a little bit easier. Thank you, Katie. Um, let's just see here. So it's a female energy that she's referring to who's in the living, having a problem with the cataracts. The left eye feels worse than the right. She's going to need some type of surgical a surgical device or surgical implant they're showing me. It's like a procedure that I'm seeing, the way they're putting it in my head, and the woman's very frightened by it, okay? But I'm being told you're going to be a blessing in her life in kind of calming her down, okay? Would you understand that? Okay, got it. Well, there's some type of... Um, procedure that is being shown connected to the woman with the brown hair this eye okay and they're making me feel like you're gonna help calm that woman down okay and yes Jennifer she'll need a laser procedure thank you okay so just know we have female energy over here commenting on the other female that needs to have that on the left eye all right Yep. Okay. And that you're going to be of great service to her in kind of bringing that compassion and keeping her calm in the moment because she's nervous. Okay. And just know that spirit is with her through this. All right. But she really is scared. So, you know, thank you for being patient with her is the message that I'm being given. And, and I don't know why, but they want me to say, tell her not to lose focus of why she wants to see again. All right, so I hope that helps. Now let's see if we can bring in another energy. Thank you so much, Jen and Kristen. Let's go into the next energy, all right? All right, I have to detach from this woman because she's pulling my tongue still. So hold on a second here. You'll do great, Jen. All right, so let's see. All right, I would like to start with a gentleman next who is telling me that he was around the rails, okay? He shows me being a track man, and then he gives me the concept of a conductor. So I know that I want to talk about a gentleman that was around the rails. We're talking about railroad, okay? He's calling himself a track man here, okay? He's showing me the tracks as I'm sitting here right now. Yes, definitely, Jeffrey. A lot of love in this room, for sure. And let me see here a second. He's giving me an accelerator uh, train, like one tr a train that goes exceptionally fast. Not like a local stopping train, one that goes very fast, okay? He's making me feel like He's talking about a conductor that lost control of the rails, okay? Lost control of the train. And he's giving me the impression that he passed due to a train wreck on a very fast accelerating train, one that would have traveled far distance without the local stops, okay? Now, let me see. If you understand this, please let me know. This is, um, I've never picked up on somebody like this before. So this is a first for me. So let me work through it. It feels like he would have been in the fourth car. He makes a point of telling us that he was in the fourth car of the train. And he gives me a feeling of being ejected or pushed out of this train. And I get the impression of a sudden fast impact as well. And I'm on like an accelerator style, fast moving train. Can anybody connect to this? I'm looking for the comments so I know whether or not you're able to connect to this gentleman. 
he talks about a friend who's in the living who is watching this right now. So this is friendly energies he's referring to that is watching right now, watching me connect with his energy. There should also be a Pennsylvania reference on this as well. And he makes me feel like he traveled quite a bit for business. Katie, you can connect to a train and impact, not the fast moving friend, not the fast moving train. He was a friend. Okay, let me get a little more. This feels like he was in the fourth car of a train. The exterior of the train has to have silver and blue. Those feel very specific to this type of derailing with the car, with the train. Okay. And let me see here a second. And he's showing me a scene where I see several train vehicles or train cars. I don't know what to call them overturned. Katie, I love you, but I don't think this is for you. So I just want to give you the heads up. I don't feel connected to you on this. So let me go a little bit more. Okay. Let me see here. Where I see the derailment off to the front end, I feel very close to like either a stone cobblestone bridge or cobblestone overhead that's not too far off from the front, okay? And it feels like also I can see a derailment. It's very important that there is a derailment and that there would have been an impact enough to either eject from a seat or eject me out. That's the feeling. No, it's not a truck. This is in a, in a train. Okay. And there's controversy over this. I'm being told there's controversy over this. Okay. And the controversy has to do with the mindset of the whoever was in control of driving this um train basically and it feels like i'm going too fast okay it feels like in this incident the train is going exceptionally fast almost like like almost double the speed of this of what it should normally be going can anybody um, take this yet? Lori, I see something about you writing a derailment happened in 2015. Would we understand people being ejected, an individual in a fourth car? I just don't know that it's for you, Lori. I just, I feel like you might have knowledge, but I don't feel necessarily it's for you. Now, this individual, I'm getting the impression that several individuals passed at the same exact time during this, okay? And I'm getting the impression that there's a sense of compassion that needs to be had for the individual that was at the controls, Okay, for some reason, we they want me to stress the message about having to have compassion for the individual or individuals that would have had the controls of the, the vehicle. And it feels like, let me just see here, I'll get a little bit more. This individual who traveled this train, he would have been it almost feels like either I'm going or coming from work because I'm getting a work feeling of transit with this. And it feels like he would have had 
a female next to him at the time of the impact. So he's showing me he's with a female as well. So he's not coming in alone. He's showing me another passenger that would have passed simultaneously at time of, it looks like a, a derailment or a flipping of a train. It's not subway. I'm outdoors on this. I feel like I'm outside in this. Would anybody understand this? A few of you are saying yes. So if you're saying yes, please indicate which of it, if you can accept all of it, or if you can only accept pieces of it, because we really wanna be able to take all of it, not just pieces, you understand? So let's go back. Train, train derailment slash crash, cobblestone or gray colored archway like this off to the front, okay? Nicole, you saying it's from Mayada. Okay, thank you, Lisa, for just joining in. Okay, there should be a conductor that we need to have compassion for. I'm being told, this isn't about a, a van though. This is about a train. So just for clarity purposes, this is a train. There is a connection to Pennsylvania on this. I'm in a train that's going way too fast than it really should be. And it feels like it's a commuter train, like one that doesn't do the locals. It just takes me from A to B, basically, to get me from one far location to another. Would we understand all of that? He would have been sitting next to a female. I'm getting the impression of the number 45, which unfortunately I could flip numbers in my head, so it could be a 54. But would we understand that with this gentleman? So interesting, he tells me that she's watching. So this is for a female that's watching right now. You might not be claiming it yet, but it's for a female. I'm being told that we need to have compassion for the conductor. There feels like there's non-malintent. There's no malintent on this part. And the soul or the gentleman that's coming through who keeps giving me a reference, okay, to the name James as well. So there's also a connection to the name James now, okay. but I don't feel like James is his name. So just to be clear, anybody know who this is yet? Otherwise it's unfortunate if I'm gonna have to pass on this guy because the visuals are very strong for me. Um, Candace, you're saying there was a train derailment in PA a few years ago. Do you know if that derailment was outdoors um, like as opposed to being within a tunnel? Cause this feels like it's outdoors and I can see up ahead that I'm gonna go through like a bridge area like an underpass. There would be a James reference. There should be a Pennsylvania reference as well. Candace, you're saying yes. Okay, thank you. And let me just see here a second. Um, Joanne, you said Michelle Thomas is claiming. Okay, I'm just waiting to see her name come up. And it feels like with this individual that the person watching who should be female, should be one of you ladies out there that's watching, would not necessarily be direct family member, but would know of this individual through friend or acquaintance. Okay, so I know it's a little bit of a distant connection, so to speak, but he's letting you know that he's here. Lori, thank you, traveling from Washington to PA. Okay, thank you very much. So, I'm hoping that this message is getting to the female that it's supposed to. Please know that he is very, very well. Michelle, you're saying yes. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, now can you take all the other pieces, Michelle, if you could just let me know that I get a yes on that so I know that I can continue with you? Would you understand that, Michelle? Hi, Bridget, thanks for just joining. Gino says, yes, it was an Amtrak derailment train going too fast. Thank you. Would we understand that there'd be a Pennsylvania reference to this? 
I see blue and I see silver. Blue seems strong. It could just be doing to signage, but a blue seems strong, silver very, very predominant on the color. Michelle, he's an ex-cousin. Okay, thank you. So a distant connection. Thank you so much. Well, please know that this individual is in fact with you guys. He is asking us, thank you, Micah, you just got the chills. This is just so cool. Thank you. It's so nice to know that your loved ones are around you and this is just validation, but he is saying to us, yes, okay, Michelle, Silver Streak, thank you. He is saying to us that we need to have compassion, compassion for the individual that was behind this, behind the driving. So very, very important. He's trying to express coming from an individual whose life was taken due to an accident that had nothing to do with his own due to a train derailment, train crash. And he is suggesting that we have love and compassion for the individual that would have been responsible, connected to these losses of lives. So please know from the spirit world, it's so very important to find peace and harmony and love even when tragedy occurs because there's greater messages behind it and when you can find that type of compassion and understanding for another individual, even in their time of peril or when there's been wrongdoing, you can understand that love is always prevalent, even in the most awful circumstances. So thank you so much, Denise. You love this. Thank you so much. I love to be able to help you guys. Thank you so, so very much. But they want me to do one more before we finish up. So let's do one more, shall we? Okay, because it is getting a little late and I know we all have kitties at home and we have work in the morning. So let's see if we can connect to one more. Okay, give me a second. Hi, Mariana, first timer. Woohoo! Well, it's always a first time for everything, right? Let's see where we go, okay? Bear with me. If you're all at home, close your eyes, relax. Let the energy of spirit come around you so you can start feeling your loved ones all around you. And let's see where we go with this. All right, I want to start with a woman. The name is either Marianne or Marion or Marion Ann, because that's how it's coming into my head. Very strict woman, very stern woman. She talks or references a problem with the lower teeth jaw area on the right hand side. She also, give me a second here. She brings that pain back in for me. She talks about how she was a very difficult mother-in-law. And she's owning up to the fact that she was a difficult mother-in-law. Think mommy dearest. Okay? Very, very difficult woman. Very stern. Very set in her ways. Would have gave anything for her son. But not so much for the daughter-in-law, unfortunately, who's physical, living, okay? And she talks to me about her faith, that Catholicism was very important to her. Now, this woman is on the other side. Just to be very clear, this woman is on the other side. So I don't want you thinking this about somebody in the living. This is her on the other side. <laughs> I see you with the comments. <laughs> so funny, but okay, let me get more. She talks about her son, almost how the daughter-in-law would refer, or basically the daughter-in-law who's married to her son would basically feel that this mother-in-law overstepped her bounds on everything, on everything basically, okay? And didn't live in the house, but basically felt like she was always in the house. Thank you, Diane, but this does not feel like Presbyterian. This feels like Catholicism. 
Okay, everybody's throwing out there that they got a difficult mother-in-law. I'm feeling for you, sorry. I have a very good mother-in-law. <laughs> okay, and um, let me see here a second. Let's see. There's a very strong connection to family connected to Rosedale as well, or that Rosedale area. And, and that piece in terms of Rosedale feels like it's connected to like when we grew up, okay? Like our childhood when they grew up. I hear the name Marion or Marianne, very strong, okay? And it feels like, I know everybody's laughing about this one. Sorry, guys. Um, it feels like she was a challenge. This woman was definitely a challenge. It's the type of woman that if she said purple, but you said blue, even though they're close in colors, no matter what you said, the sky is still purple. Okay. And it feels like, let me just see here a second. She has one son and one daughter, but would have had a very close relationship with her son. Not that her daughter wasn't important, but it would have appeared when she was in the physical world that she gave preference to being more involved in her son's life. Now, let's just see here a second. There is extended family connected to the Carolinas with her through the other side of the family. And she also makes me feel like She would go to church as often as she possibly can, could. She's showing me like every Sunday going, but then she's also showing me intermittently throughout the week. Okay. And let me see here a second. When I look at the way she dressed, she's in a woman's sweater, button up sweater. She has a shirt underneath it. I notice a very small cross on here and on her neck, and it feels like she's trying to extend an apology to her daughter-in-law. So please know if you are connected to the Mary, Marianne, Mary num uh, name, very strict woman who She's telling me the daughter-in-law is watching and she would have had, basically she, she pushed herself too much into the relationship where she shouldn't have. And she is apologizing to the daughter-in-law who went above and beyond, but she never gave her credit for. Like even down to cooking the way that she wanted her to cook, setting the house, like the furniture, the colors, seeking her approval and never giving her that. She wants to extend her apologies and know that she did the best she could while she was here with the agenda that she had as a soul and that she wants to really apologize. So I don't know if you're here to accept this. I feel like you are. I don't know if you're gonna accept it publicly, but I do know she is trying to make herself clear that she is very much in here. Now, before we finish for the evening, because I know we have to get out of here, what I would love to do if you guys are interesting, anybody up for some healing energy, if those of you who are interested in receiving healing energy, just stay on here, type the word below energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y, so I know that you're up for it. If you can send that to me real quick, so I know that you're interested in receiving some energy, please let me know, just type that below energy. And once I see that start popping up, what we'll do is I'll send some energy Yep, let me just see that here. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. Christina's saying yes, Kristen's saying yes. Right now, perfect, Kristen, Gina, beautiful. We've got the word energy showing, perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let me just charge these hands of mine and we'll start sending what I want you to do, relax. That's what you gotta do. You have to almost like just be like, oh, what a day. Let's just relax, okay? <laughs> got you, your boobs need it, I hear ya. Okay, all right, bear with me here. I'm gonna start building energy and I will start sending you some energy. 
hopefully to start reinvigorating you guys. Let me know once you start feeling it, okay? Please let me know when you start feeling the energy. Just type like I'm feeling it or I'm getting chills or whatever you're feeling so that I know you're starting to feel the energy build, okay? I'm asking my energy guides to work with me to assist you guys with some energy because everybody could use a boost from now on, right? Who doesn't like a boost, right? Okay, once you know you're starting to feel it, please let me know. Kelsey's getting a warm feeling, okay? I'm focusing the energy a little stronger. Katie, you're getting it, feeling it where you need it. Sherry, you're feeling it, beautiful. Please let me know if you're feeling it more. I'm expanding it so it gets stronger amongst us. Okay, good. 